you'd have told me two years ago, oh, there's gonna be this thrash metal band that's in Tyrell, and I would have been like, you're fucking crazy. Tyrell works extremely well with the metal genre. It's amazing. I'd never encountered it. <laughs> Explosive, right? The fact that they're taking that putting it into their music and then writing songs with it helps that foundation of that language be communicated not only in New Zealand but also across the globe. If we were to lose Te Māori in New Zealand, we may as well be any old Western civilization who's just lost contact with its own identity. All the odds are against us to survive as a culture. That's the number one thing, to, to keep it all going. We as Alien Weaponry want to get Māori out there to the world in order to inspire New Zealanders to actually fight to keep the language because it is dying out. We used to use them for, you know, that, that was our pocket money. Each of those marbles was worth like 50 cents or whatever. We're trying to decide whether we want to reinstate them as swear jars. We don't want to reinstate them as yeah. swear jars. Lewis is loud, but so is Henry. No. We can all be no. loud, no. but... Dude, don't, don't, don't just say, oh, Lewis is loud, but we're all loud, jeez, yeah. I don't think it was supposed to be quite this serious. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, me and Lewis, who's my younger brother, we've kind of been playing music since we could walk and talk. When we decided to start writing actual songs together, you know, it, it kind of just worked. We'd recently watched District 9, so that was kind of the inspiration for the, for the band name. We thought it was a really cool movie, and for an eight and 10 year old, that's a, like a really cool band name, so <laughs> it's kind of stuck. I can do two noises like Lewis was always using his ears. Yeah. yeah he's oral. very oral okay. like. I mean, I used to find Lewis sometimes lying on the floor with his ear against the floor and I'd say, What are you doing? And he'd say, oh, I'm listening to the water running through the pipes. Henry was good at drawing and making things and like figuring out things, how they worked, and he was like a really good artist from a very young age. I mean, it's been pretty exciting just over the, over the last summer gone because the boys did, for the first time, they, they were booked on really big festivals, so playing really big stages. For us, it's yeah. been quite satisfying just seeing how they handle that themselves. So, Lewis, <laughs> can you and Ethan get the washing in and hang out once in the back? Yeah. In the back country, please. Do they have to be exactly right now? Yes, because the sun will go down if you leave it much longer. But it's, it's something that goes just wet, go man. and do it. Yeah. Henry, is all of that black stuff dry, is it? Are you guys, did you guys actually taste it to see if it would actually dry? Yes. Yeah. I go to Breen Bay College, which is in Ruakaka about 15 minutes drive from here. It's like a pretty average sized school. Just over 500 kids. I haven't always liked school, but lately I've been learning to enjoy it. God damn it. We're in the Breen Bay College music room at the moment and this is where I spend most of my time at school. Man, that's difficult. I grew up in a really musical household, so I've always had access to music. I guess I've always just found it as an easy vehicle to express myself. I mean, I'm good at it, so I might as well, like, do it. <laughs> 
Uh, we're at Otomatea High School. It's in Mungatuduoto. It's where I go to school. None of my family is really musical at all, so I sort of had to discover music myself. Growing up, there wasn't much metal in the house. The closest that I ever got was sort of Pink Floyd. Once I got on the bass, I loved it. And so I just kept on playing and haven't stopped. Look at that filthiness. <laughs> Started working here three months ago. You know, I've been into cars and stuff since I was quite young. And, um, you know, relatively recently, I've gotten into actually doing, like, the mechanical side. Um, not really plan B. Like, I... I'd... I just enjoy doing things with my hands, eh? It's, it's something I like doing, and just being able to do this stuff yourself is really, really good. It's a bit weird having to work in my band life um, with this. You know, of course, being here, I'm having to pretty much work full time, and the fact that my band is such a big part of my life now, it's quite hard to balance those things. Donkey. The first time I came over here, I was like sitting over there actually just on the step. Neil was passing around the base between like other kids, you know, everybody was kind of trying it out, but I was the only kid that could um, reach the end of the base comfortably. Com comf comf comfortably. Com yeah, that. That sounds trippy. My relationship with Henry and Lewis has gotten to the point where we're not really friends anymore. They call me their brother, and it's not an exaggeration. I spend half of my time at their house. I mean, we have a lot of fun together. I'm definitely closer with them than I am with any of my other friends, really. Me and Lewis spent the first few years of our schooling at a Kurakaupapa Māori. You know, not only do we have Māori whakapapa, but we've also got you know, a little more connection maybe than some other people who haven't, you know, taken up Māori. I feel like people are a little bit afraid to delve into speaking Māori because they're scared of offending people, but I think we need to make it clear that speaking Māori isn't going to offend anyone, it's actually going to help the language, so, like, it's actually worse if people don't speak it. That's actually based on a battle um, at Pukehinehine and our great-great-great-grandfather Te Ahuaho fought at that battle. The Māori built underground bunkers underneath their pa to shelter them because the British were bombarding their pa for like a day and a half. So when they stormed in, there was no one there. And so they were like, yeah, we captured the pa and then the Māori came up from the ground and then ambushed them. That's a story of like, heroicness, you know, just triumphing against all odds. It's a good location for a heavy metal band to rehearse because we've kind of got no neighbours, so it's pretty chill. We've had an issue with one of the uh, radio packs, um, the wireless transmitter setups for the for the guitars. So yeah, it's the kind of thing we do quite a bit of. Um, the band is a bit of a ongoing kind of operation that needs to get be soldered together and. <laughs> I actually do the front of house sound. That's probably the main role that I perform for the band now is I'm their sound tech.
when they perform live. I worked for years in recording studios, so I've kind of pulled on some of those, my past work history, and I stepped into that role. So I'm quite enjoying that. On my great-grandfather's side wing, Ate Pikiao, um, which is Rotowiti Lakes District. On my great-grandmother's side wing, Ate Rokoa. Um, but most of my childhood experiences were with our Ngāti Pikiao Fana. It's a cool and my wife sometimes says spooky place because of the dark bays and the lakes and the deep lake, you know. Having that solid personal connection with our home and our, our family here. There's purpose in, in why we're getting out on the stage and, and singing about what we're singing about. Bear in mind it's really fucking cold at the moment, so it's, I'm not being a little bitch. Ooh, I can actually feel it. Coming back and establishing more of a connection with your whanau, it's like we haven't, we haven't really been doing that. This is kind of helping to establish who we are, where we come from, and like why we need to keep doing this, you know? Take your carpet off and we'll do the inter interview. <laughs> He's always wearing his carpet. It's his rustic carpet, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Straight away, I walked over to the fence and looked over at the lake. And I was like, wow, this place is beautiful. I don't really have the whole whānau thing here like these guys do, but he's our blood whānau. <laughs> hey, man, what's your name? Hey, hey man. All right. Yeah. Nice to meet you, man. We are representing kind of these stories that dads learned through our whānau and we've learned through him so it's really it's our family stories that we're sharing with people so it's there's quite a strong connection with you know this place and what we're doing with the band. First of all the, the, the Māori language is pure and the English language is the language of many languages. My grandmother took me soon after I was born. She spoke Māori so naturally, well, I had to speak Māori. I knew no other language. The first day at school, I was whacked over the head. I got such a fright, I, I wet myself. Can you imagine a four-year-old child being whacked over the head by a stranger? He sent me home. My grandmother said, How could you yeah. So the next morning, she caught our horse and hopped on, grabbed me, put me on the back of the horse, and off we went to the school. She let me down and got off and walked up. It was then that he knew, oh, this kid wouldn't talk English. <laughs> Waiata is, is history. To understand the Waiatas that we sing, you have to know the Maori language because the history is all there in the Waiata. Through music, I think you can promote all sorts of things that are happening in our community, things that are happening in the world. Amazing, unifying messages, yeah. For us as Māori, karakia is really important. Karakia, prayer. And I, I, would, I would advise them to, before going on stage, is to, to karakia, ask for, you know, the strength and the guidance uh, from their ancestors to, for their support to help them 
in their concerts and in their, you know, tours around and their trips. I mean, we've got our beautiful sliding doors, the nice peeling vinyl, bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a, a bit of foliage. The Black there. Pearl is a awesome van. It's a 2002 Ford Transit. She's a minter. Ooh. Yeah. Our <laughs> um, um, number plate says R. Yeah, if you come, and, come and observe the number plate. So this is why it's called the Black Pearl. Is Arr. because actually it's a pirate ship. Yes. It's been the bandwagon for, I think, three years now we've had it. We nearly blew it up once um, when it, it ran out of water, but um, luckily we were able to bring it back from that and it's done another 50,000 k since, so it's, it's pretty, pretty reliable as far as Fords go. <laughs> Slightly wider because that's about perfect. Um, Basically, from when these guys started, the goal was always to play at Wakan before Henry was 20. So it's pretty crazy to be going over there real soon. He slided in between these and like pushed them all out. It's gonna be like, yeah, it's gonna be so fun to be stuck with these guys for like three months. So far, we haven't really experienced anything like on the same level. So I guess this is kind of a new start for us. For me, I still think of myself as we, we were three or four years ago, where I really, I don't expect anyone to know who we are. And I mean, it's awesome, but it's, yeah, strange. It's weird walking around and someone that you've never met before says, oh, you're that guy from Alien with me, yeah. Really, the, the crowd is the thing that rocks us up most. It doesn't matter even if you stuff up because like, it's almost like a motivation to push through. This is the last opportunity to mosh. I want everyone involved. This song is our latest single. This is about the ancient Maori custom. That is Kai Dangada! If you don't know your language, you don't know your, your heritage, you don't know your whakapapa, you don't know where you come from, you don't know any of that, you're going to be lost. We were one of the last indigenous people in, in the world to be colonised. The ultimate goal of a coloniser is to delete a culture, amalgamate into a single um, society that doesn't reflect the indigenous. In the language lies the subtleties of the culture that you can't express. I can't express to you right now in English the subtleties and the beauty of the Māori culture with this language because it doesn't suffice, you know? In my mind, there's, there ain't no chance it's gonna die. It's just not gonna have this. There's no two ways about it, you know? has to survive. It's too strong a culture to be deleted. If you're looking at where that's come from, from my dad being whipped for speaking Māori, to his parents being treated like shit, to where it is now, we've come a long, long way. So I think sometimes we get hung up on, it needs to be this, statistics of this, but you actually got to sometimes look at what's actually happening. It's so like 30 years ago I was trying to do this shit, but it just wasn't working, you know, in the 90s it just wasn't working. But now, look how far it's come, you know, here's these boys up there doing te reo Māori heavy, heavy music. And I can't wait to see them go off on their journey around the world and fuck shit up.
サカロの前来てたねよなプールがいてたいまたあぶかりないな This might actually provoke people into deciding hey it, maybe it's a useful thing to learn and maybe there's more to it than just being able to speak another language Our songs are the karakia You know we're singing about our tūpuna and about things that we're very passionate about Really we're getting up there and we're almost doing a karakia to the world.